Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, minimum cost to cut a stick. And to be honest, somebody at Leak Code really needs to put down the crack pipe because we are given a wooden stick of length N, so far so good. The stick is labeled from zero up until N, so just like, you know, a meter stick or something like that. And we're also given an array of cuts, which tell us where we are going to perform the cut. So for example, we could cut here, we could cut there, we could cut here, but then they tell us we should perform the cuts in order. And also you can change the order of the cuts as you wish. And at that point, I just stop reading the description because it's probably not gonna help you understand the problem. So let's actually look at the example. So let's say we're given N equals seven and these are the cuts. Now they tell us here that if we try to just perform the cuts in the order that they're given, we do not end up with the optimal result. And by the way, every time we perform a cut, so for example, one, we're gonna be cutting right here. Every time we perform a cut, we take the length of the stick that we just cut, which in this case is seven, zero up until seven, and we add it to like the cost. We're trying to calculate the cost of cutting the stick with all these cuts. And we're not only that, we're trying to minimize that cost. So in this case, no matter which one of these cuts we do first, I mean, the length is of length seven, so we're always gonna have to have a plus seven here. Next, let's try to perform the three cut. So these are our two sticks remaining. Suppose we do the cut here. What's the length of this portion of the stick? It's length six. So then we add a plus six to our total cost. Next, try to do the four. We cut here. The length of this portion looks to me like it's also four. So then we say plus four. And lastly, we do the five on this portion, which is of length three. And then we end up with these sticks. We don't care about the sticks. We care about the cost. So we add the plus three here. Total, we get 20 was the cost. Now there's different orderings that we could have done the cuts in. And this happens to be the optimal ordering. First cutting three, which again would give us a cost of seven. Then cut five rather than cutting four because it kind of divides the stick into evenly sized portions rather than cutting it here, which would leave us with a one, but then also leave us with a three over here. So cutting here first gives us a cost of four, not bad. Then do one over here. The length of this portion is three, so we get a plus three. And then lastly, we do the four cut. The length of this portion is two. So we ended up, I think, with a cost of 16. So clearly doing it in this order is minimal. But if we try to brute force this, we'll have to pretty much try every permutation of cuts. I think that's roughly n factorial, and that's not going to be super efficient. So let's see how we can try to optimize this problem. And first, let's just kind of understand how we can even think about this problem at all. Like, how could we even solve it recursively, even with a brute force approach? Well, let's consider the choices that we have. We know we have a choice for every single cut. We could cut three first, we could cut at five first, we could cut at one first, or we could cut at four first. I redrew it just to make it a bit more clear that these are like the cuts that are happening, but what kind of value are we gonna be maintaining? Let's suppose we did the cut on three. We knew originally the length of our stick was seven. Now that we cut three, obviously we're gonna have two different sticks at this point. It looks like we're gonna have a stick of length three and we're gonna have a stick of length four. And we need to then recursively go in both directions. So basically every time we perform a cut, we're actually not creating one branch for that. We're, cre we're creating two branches. Um, maybe I'm not drawing it super clearly, but that's because it's kind of hard to visualize. But notice how like saying, okay, now the length of the stick here is three, the length of the stick on this side is four. That's not really enough information because now if we try additional cuts, like we try to perform a five cut here, a one cut, a four cut, we don't know, does that cut actually apply because if we're cutting at the five mark we can't cut like this stick at the five mark and this stick of length four we can't just cut it at some arbitrary spot we have to cut it at this particular spot we have to know that that's where we're cutting it and it's going to be split into two sticks of length two so rather than keeping track of the length of our portion, let's keep track of the range of it. So initially we're at a range from left equals zero to right equals seven. So that gives us a more clear definition of the sub problem that we are currently at. Now, the other thing is, 
Let's suppose we did cut at three. It's pretty easy for us to know what the cost of that cut at three was because we just take the length of our range. We could take right minus left. That gives us the length. So that's easy enough. But now that we already used the three, now from here, we're probably going to make some more choices, right? Probably these choices. We still have to do the five cut. We still have to do the one cut and we still have to do the four cut. So should we be keeping track of that cuts array and like dynamically removing from it as we already perform a cut? You could try it that way. It'd be kind of complicated to do it, but notice that it's actually not really necessary in the context of this problem. If we perform a three cut and now here we try to perform four more cuts again, including the three cut. If I try to do the three, the five, the one and the four, the three cut is not really going to do anything anymore because we know after we did the cut here, we actually ended up with two sticks from zero to three and then another stick from three to seven. So you can try cutting this stick at the three mark, like this stick over here. You can try cutting it here. It's not really doing anything. You can try cutting this stick at the three mark. It's not really doing anything. So basically, there's an easier way for us to know that this cut is unnecessary. And that's basically every time we try a cut, let's at least make sure that that cut, in this case, three, let's at least make sure that cut is greater than the left boundary and less than the right boundary. In this case, three is not greater than the three and less than the seven. This does not apply. Therefore, this cut does not apply to this segment. And also the one cut over here also wouldn't apply to this segment of the stick. So therefore, there's an easier way for us to know that this branch is not gonna do anything for us. And also, the one branch is not gonna on this portion of the stick, and the five would not do anything on this portion, and the four would not do anything on this portion of the stick. So that is an easy way to simplify this problem. And believe it or not, those are really the two points that you need to keep track of to solve this problem. Even though this is a hard problem, it's actually surprisingly not super insane. I guess the hard part was trying to understand what the hell they're asking for. Again, the two points are that we're keeping track of the range of our stick and that we're just going to be looping through all the possible cuts, determining if a cut actually is valid for that portion of the stick or not. And that will be enough to solve this problem, especially when we apply caching to it, because you notice that the subproblem itself is very simple. We don't even need to keep track of this as part of the subproblem. We simplified that part. We only need to keep track of the range and there's going to be two values left and right. The possible combinations of these two values are going to be n possibilities for left because it could be any of these values. Same thing for right. So the number of possibilities is going to be n squared. Now we are going to be looping through the cuts array each time. So I believe the overall time complexity is going to be the length of the cuts array. Let's call that m multiplied by n squared where n is given to us as a parameter. So now let's code this up. So remember, we're going to have a recursive function. I'm gonna call it DFS. The range of our subproblem is gonna be defined from left to right. And immediately, let me show you how I'm gonna call this. I'm gonna call DFS starting from zero, going up until n, which is the parameter given to us. And I guess this is one thing I didn't talk about. What's going to be the base case for this problem? Possibly where the length of the stick is equal to zero, possibly where left is equal to right. Well, is that technically possible? Is it possible for us to cut this stick in such a way that we get a length segment that's of equal to zero? Not really. So we're probably never going to call DFS where the two left and right boundaries are equal. It wouldn't really make sense. The base case would basically be if none of the cuts apply to this segment. And we don't necessarily know that until we iterate through the list of cuts. But there is one case where we do immediately know that. And that's when the length of our segment is equal to one. So basically, R minus left is equal to one. And in that case, we would just go ahead and return zero. Let me add the if part to that here. So that's the main base case. We're going to have another base case for the caching case. But for now, I'm just going to code this up the brute force way. So remember, we're trying to minimize the uh, cost. So let's initialize the cost to be a really big value like infinity. And then let's start going through every possible cut in the cuts array. Now, how do we know if this cut applies? Remember, if the cut is greater than left and less than right, 
And in Python, you can do that with like a single equality like this, but maybe in other languages you can't. Now, how do we calculate the cost? Well, the cost to cut this stick was right minus left plus now let's run DFS on the left portion of the stick, which we can get by taking the left pointer and the cut position because that kind of tells us now where the end of that stick is going to be. And let's also call DFS on the right portion, which is going to be from the cut mark up until the right pointer. And remember, we're trying to minimize the result. So let's set result equal to minimum of itself and this uh, portion, which is the recursive case, of course. So after this, our result will be minimized. Now, technically there is an edge case. What if none of the cuts actually applied? Like we never even executed the recursive case. Result would still be infinity and that's probably not what we want to return. So maybe we can set result equal to zero if it's still equal to infinity. That basically tells us that we could not cut the stick just like in this case. Otherwise, we leave it as the result and then here we return the result. So that's pretty much the entire code. And believe it or not, it actually does pass on leak code. And you can see the time complexity is not going to be super efficient. Actually, this won't pass on leak code. I forgot to do the caching. So let's make sure we do that, which is usually pretty easy. Just a few lines. I'm going to create our DP cache. In this case, I'm going to use a hash map, but you could probably use a two dimensional array. I'm going to check, has this key already been computed? And if it has, go ahead and return it like this. If it hasn't, let's go ahead and compute it, which basically means we're computing the result. So before we return the result, let's also make sure we add that same value into the cache, which I'm just doing in a single line. Sorry if this is confusing because there's multiple assignments being made. This is being assigned to result and result is being assigned to that. And then we're returning the same value. So now let's run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's somewhat efficient. I think there's a slight optimization that leak code made in the editorial, but I think the overall time complexity actually can't really be improved. No matter what, you are going to need a loop inside of the recursive function. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.